our spiritual practice for today, which is derived from, uh, which is taken from Sir John Templeton's book, can be stated in this way. Look deep within to realize the source of our divinity. Look deep within to the source of our divinity. So you may be hearing a theme here. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of emphasis upon looking within. It's clear that apart from looking within, um, the spiritual life can, cannot really get off the ground. Uh, you, one can have a ritualistic uh, kind of religiosity. One can follow external patterns and forms, and there's value in this kind of uh, spirituality. But uh, I think for that to remain vital and to be revitalized, this inward uh, summons uh, needs to be obeyed. And I can't think of too many religious traditions in which there is not an, a summons to this, uh, this inner journey, the inner journey, the journey within. Um, now, I've given a number of principles and practices so far that, uh, that can help us with our inner journey. I think the first, of course, is the turning within. That in itself is, is big. It's monumental. It's momentous. I mean, how hard is that, and maybe how rare is it to consciously, intentionally turn away from all of the external sources of stimulation that are available to us? And now, I mean, we have the whole internet in our hand, in our pocket, and all we have to do is say something like, hey, Google, or hey, Siri, or hello, Google, and we can get whatever information we need. What to speak of staying in contact with everyone? So. That's great, but on the other hand, our, externally, our external focus has become even more intense and our attention is more dissipated and fragmented than ever before. So how hard it is, how big it is, how momentous it is if we actually could find the will power and the conviction that would allow us to turn within. You know, I have friends, they'll say to me, I can't sit still by myself in a room for more than a minute. And I don't know if that's meant to be a form of self-congratulation or if it's a lament. And I sometimes think that it's more congratulation than sadness, as if that were uh, what's normal. And it may be normal. But on the other hand, without somehow or other tearing ourselves away and going within, we, I do think it'll be hard to uh, find these inner resources that can allow us to live a much fuller uh, spiritual life. So... Step one is to try to turn within. And perhaps before we even get there, because it's so hard to turn within, we have to evaluate the sources of our behavior. We have to think about what kinds of thoughts we're thinking. If we're, if we're engaged in really you know, difficult activities that involve abuse and harm and exploitation, it's probably not ever going to occur to us to turn within. And so as we purify our behavior of these external factors, there's a kind of natural buoyancy in the mind that rises up, a kind of an innate goodness that comes when we start to guard our behavior and we're not careless even for a moment. And then that buoyancy naturally inclines us to turn within. So the spiritual life is really not to be forced. It's really more of a matter of growth. The very fact that we're engaged in this process together means that we're already serious about the process. So as we begin to find ourselves in this gentler, quieter, purified state of mind, that's where the summons to turn within actually starts to arise as a gentle imperative within consciousness. It's the beginning of the mystical life. It's the beginning of the deeper spiritual life. And while our obedience to this may be halting and at times may be non-existent, even the beginning of an attempt to heed that summons will begin to alter very gently our consciousness, transforming it from being externally focused to be, being internally focused. And um, what can happen then is as we uh, uh, obey that summons and we begin to abide in a kind of inner quietness, we will inevitably at some point, and this will be a great lure to bring us back, start to experience a, a sense of peace. That's probably the first dawning of the inner life, a, a kind of a a sudden, unaccountable sense of peace. Where did that come from? A kind of an inner quietness. Whoa, that's great. And then, 
if we stay with that and we continue to practice that over time in different sessions, that will actually start to deepen and become richer and finer. And we'll start to notice that it's actually rippling through it. It's tinged with this kind of subtle sense of delight or happiness. It's like, like a spiritual happiness that begins to emerge. It begins to bubble up from the center of our consciousness into the into the wider reaches of our of our of our minds and and this kind of spiritual happiness is is bubbling over with spiritual information and the one of these bits of information is that there's no death that death is a word death is something that happens to physical forms but it doesn't happen to my innermost self this, of course, is a great insight to have. It's, it can relieve a lot of fear and anxiety in people's lives. Um, and as, as that continues, uh, this feeling of bliss can also be associated with, as I said, these deep insights. And, of course, as is inevitable, we might start becoming a, a little bit addicted to these experiences and only want to experience them and only go within to experience them. Well... Not in any way, we, shouldn't, we should never discount these experiences or put them to the side, but we should not allow ourselves to become unduly concerned about achieving them. Because there are times in the spiritual life where that will disappear, and that's meant, meant for deeper growth. But in these moments when we do experience that uh, delightful uh, sense of the divine presence within, we uh, can experience, we can use, the, the poetry of the mystics is great along these lines. Some of the greatest poetry in the world has been created by mystics and saints trying to express this divine, this, this, this inpouring, outpouring of divine consciousness. They refer to it as this inner spice garden or the inner fountain, the pearl of great price, the water of life, the babbling brook of spirit, undying life, the fourth beyond the three and so on and so forth. So many other expressions like that. This, is, uh, this has been expressed in memorable lines from multiple religious traditions. This, this what happens when we begin to turn within and to uh, uh, allow the inner life to unfold within us. Uh, the Baha'i faith, which we'll talk about in a later lecture, gives this instruction. Ponder a while thereon on the teaching, on the scripture, that with both your inner and outer eye, so we have these outer eyes, but we have an inner eye as well, inner senses, you may perceive the subtleties of divine wisdom. Remember from the last talk, right? the, the divine wisdom without any other cause issues uh, from deep within us. It's, it's deep intuition. And uh, the subtleties, you will perceive the subtleties of divine wisdom and discover the gems of heavenly knowledge. That's not just poetry. And in, in Judaism, uh, we find from a, uh, uh, a great uh, mystic, uh, Moses Ibn Ezra, from about a thousand years ago, a Spanish-Jewish mystic, he wrote, and he, ca he said it at least as well as anybody in John's Sir John's book, and better than I could say it, dive into the sea of thoughts and find their pearls beyond price. Poetry, yes, but actually a call to action, because it's true, if we turn within, this whole inner landscape will begin slowly to unfold itself. Um, the, in the Catholic Christian tradition, we find uh, Teresa uh, of Avila, great Spanish mystic as well, and she wrote, as soon as you apply yourself to reflection, to spiritual thinking, you will find at once your senses gather themselves together. They seem like bees which return to the hive and there shut themselves up to the work of making honey. This is identical to the process of developing concentration that's described in great detail in the Yoga Sutra of Hinduism and in the uh, Visuddhimagga of Theravada Buddhism. And so the idea here is, can be stated again quite simply, uh, and that is that if we, through our spiritual reading and spiritual hearing, something sparks our, our, our a sense of inspiration within us, if we turn our attention onto that and abide with that, allowing other thoughts to subside, 
then the pearls beyond price, the gems of hidden knowledge, the inner honey will begin to emerge in our consciousness, and it will show us that the spiritual life is of great vitality and of the utmost importance in helping us to live complete and fulfilled lives.